good morning all today we are going to discuss clinical classification of stroke the objective is to learn the clinical classification of stroke how to define stroke stroke is a clinical syndrome of rapid onset of focal deficits of brain function which lasts more than 24 hours so that is important or leading to death so that is the definition of stroke it is a rapid onset focal deficits related to brain function lasting more than 24 hours or it leads to death this is in contrast with the transient ischemic episodes or transient ischemic attacks which lasts less than 24 hours even though the time is given as 24 hours usually it lasts less than 15 minutes typical example is the amaurosis vigans otherwise called transient mono ocular visual loss so that is a typical example of a taa there are different ways in which we classify stroke we will go into a clinical classification of stroke as already mentioned tas are considered mean by many as mini stroke that is it is a forerunner of stroke and this can be considered as a mini stroke sometimes a stroke may be progressing so they may come with minimal weakness of one side this may progress and such a stroke is called progressing stroke or stroke in evolution so this stroke is going to evolve so it is called a stroke in evolution sometimes the stroke is completed usually the stroke will be complete within 24 hours to 48 hours usually and maximum 72 hours the time duration for progression of stroke is maximum is 72 hours that is for posterior circulation stroke and in anterior circulation usually less than 48 hours so if anything is lasting progressing more than 40 to 72 hours it is unlikely to be stroke that is important point to be kept in mind now go into the vascular system that is stroke is a focal deficit of vascular origin so this vascular system can be arterial or venous many times we forget about venous stroke so venous stroke is important because the sinus thrombosis cortical vein venous thrombosis all these can present as stroke so the stroke can be depending upon the vascular territory you divide into arterial system involvement or venous system involvement then depending upon the pathology you divide it into whether it is an ischemia that is ischemia leading on to infarct or is it a bleeding in the brain that is hemorrhage so pathologically the classification is in ischemic stroke versus hemorrhagic stroke then stroke as already mentioned is a vascular disease so you have to classify it depending upon which vascular territory is affected so stroke can be in the vascular tract of the anterior circulation which consists of the internal carotid artery and its branches or posterior circulation which consists of the vertebro basilar system so even though they have considered it as vascular territory the pathology and site clinically you classify into 
depending upon the amount of vascular territory that is affected, this is purely a clinical classification. Even without imaging, you classify one as total anterior circulation stroke, otherwise called PACS. Partial anterior circulation stroke, otherwise called PACS. Lacunar syndromes and box or posterior circulation stroke. That is how you divide. So divide into packs, packs, lacs, and box. Earlier we are divided into infarct and hemorrhage. Hemorrhage can be subarachnoid or this can be in the brain barrier That is intracranial hemorrhage or in the subarachnoid space. Okay. As already mentioned, we have divided the stroke into hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. That is a fundamental classification, hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. So here you can see on the left side, there is a hemorrhage bleeding and on the right side, you can see there is ischemia. So, Strokes can be basically ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke. The classification we mentioned previously is for basically for diagnosing the territory which is involved that to clinically. And this is called a Bamford classification of ischemic stroke. So it's predominantly for ischemic stroke, we we'll use this classification. That is PACs, PACs, LACs, and POCs. So first thing, in the stroke, ischemic stroke, you divide the vascular territory, whether it is arterial or it is venous. 99% of strokes are arterial. Only 1% is venous. That is one thing you should remember. Then you divide the stroke into hemorrhage and skin. 15% of the strokes are hemorrhagic and 85% is skin. So, majority of the strokes that you come across will be ischemic stroke. But in a major center, the percentage may be different. Suppose we take a community, this will be the 85% of the strokes are ischemic stroke. Then depending upon the site, so first is vascular system, we already mentioned. Second is the pathology, to divide into infarct, hemorrhage. And then depending upon the site, your anterior circulation and posterior circulation. Then you clinically classify it into, as already mentioned, the total anterior circulation, partial anterior circulation, lacunar strokes, and posterior circulation stroke. Among the strokes, ischemic stroke, only 20% is in the posterior circulation. Majority of the strokes are in the anterior circulation, that is. 80% of the blood supply is going via the internal carotid artery and its branches. So, the blockage of the internal carotid artery or its subdivisions are more common than vertebral basilar stroke. Okay. When you take the intracranial hemorrhage, 5% is in the subarachnoid space, 10% Intra parenchymal. So, of the total 15% of stroke, 5% is in the subarachnoid space, and majority that is 10%. Okay, this is not, this is related to the whole stroke. So, of the total stroke, 10% is 
indra parent payment and 5% is separate amount hope it is clear to you and when you take the venous impact or venous thrombosis one peculiarity of the venous thrombosis is the venous thrombosis producing ischemia leads on to hemorrhagic transformation so this is usually a hemorrhagic infarct so that's the point to be remembered and i already mentioned only 1% of the stroke are due to venous infarct postpartum period is a very potential period where you can get a cerebral venous thrombosis what age is media you can get a venous venous thrombosis thrombophilic stage you can get venous thrombosis we will go to the clinical classification of ischemic stroke first we take the facts when the total arterial circulation is blocked this includes the internal carotid artery which divides into the middle cerebral and the anterior cerebral both has to be affected so you can see that the the extensive area of brain is affected so in a total anterior circulation major chunk of brain is lost so what will happen there will be combination of hemiparesis cerebral dysfunction that is definite evidence of cortical dysfunction the typical findings are aphasia apraxia agnosia cortical sensory loss visual field defects these are characteristic of cortical involvement and if present it suggests total anterior circulation stroke that is involvement of one side of the body plus evidence of cortical dysfunction hemi sensory loss is common because of the involvement of the parietal lobe and as already mentioned homonymous hemianopia if all these are there this is definitely can make a clinical diagnosis of tacs that is total anterior circulation stroke so usually it is due to embolism from the heart somebody with a mitostenosis a large thrombus which embolizes it goes to the internal carotid system more commonly and it blocks middle cerebral and anterior cerebral artery and you can see in the ct scan you can see both the area supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery is involved so this is total anterior circulation stroke that is definite feature of cortical involvement plus hemiparesis plus hemisensory if these three are there it is total anterior circulation stroke so in summary total anterior circulation stroke middle cerebral and anterior cerebral arteries involved all the three of the following that is unilateral weakness both arm arms and legs are affected homonymous hemianopia and cerebral dysfunction in the form of dysphagia and other higher order functions hope it is clear to you now we go to the facts for partial anterior circulation stroke so here it is either the involvement of the middle cerebral territory or the anterior cerebral artery territory is affected that is why it is called partial so what are the features either the leg alone is affected arm alone is affected face is affected or any of these kind of isolated motor loss isolated cerebral dysfunction that is aphasia alone 
or a combination of cerebral dysfunction plus motor for example aphasia plus motor weakness there may not be hemisensory loss so all the features which is present in the total anterior circulation stroke will be will not be there that is the difference the common pathology is again can be due to thrombus or an embolism which is blocking one of the divisions of the mediterranean artery or anterior cerebral artery say so a branch occlusion can produce this you can see a partial so this it is can show say partial involvement of the mca branch so this distinction is clear so there will be no complete hemiparesis partial weakness or a combination of partial weakness plus a cortical dysfunction if a cortical dysfunction is present then only you can say definitely it is a partial or sometimes total anterior circulation stroke is present imaging will confirm your clinical diagnosis so packs consist of part of the anterior circulation two of the following that is unilateral already i mentioned unilateral weakness homonymous hemianopia or cerebral dysfunction like aphasia agnosia apraxia or visual visual spatial dysfunction hope it is clear so feature of a large vessel stroke is evidence of cortical dysfunction okay now we come to the partial sorry the posterior circulation stroke posterior circulation as we know consists of the vertebral artery and its branches along with the basilar artery and its branches which supplies mainly the brain stem and cerebellum and as we know the cranial nerves are arising from the brain stem so posterior circulation stroke usually presents with the features of cranial nerve dysfunction plus cerebellar dysfunction and that it is this posterior circulation especially the posterior cerebral artery is supplying the occipital lobe so you can get homonymous hemianopia here that is visual problem can occur there can be cerebellar syndrome and i have already mentioned cranial nerve dysfunction if any one is present we can think about the possibility of posterior circulation stroke again we can be due to thrombus or embolism arising from the heart just like the etiology can be similar to that of the anterior circulation stroke you can see the ct scan shows in fact in the brain stem so summary of posterior circulation stroke any one of the following homonymous hemianopia cerebellar dysfunction conjugate eye movement abnormalities because as we know from the brain stem the cranial nerves are arising so cranial nerve dysfunction especially 3 4 6 or eighth nerve in the form of vertigo is a characteristic feature of brain stem stroke okay then next is bilateral findings motors and sensory findings which are bilateral is again a feature of posterior circulation stroke the most characteristic and typical finding is cross hemiplegia that is ipsilateral element type of cranial nerve involvement and contralateral hemiparesis we will discuss this in detail when we discuss brain stem disorders then comes the lacnar strokes or lacnar syndromes lacnar syndrome means it is a very small the penetrating branches less than 2 mm is the size of the infarct that is occurring they, they are indirectly it means that these are subcortical infarcts the cortical dysfunction will not be there you will not get aphasia apraxia agnosia or hemi hemianopia typically so that is the characteristic other findings will be there so let us see what are they 
One is pure motor attacks, that is hemiparesis, motor stroke. Pure sensory stroke, a subcortical impact producing sensory tracts are affected. Sometimes we can get sensory motor, even though sensory motor is more characteristic of or can occur in partial and total anterior circulation stroke, this can occur in Dagna syndromes also. This you should remember, there are no higher cerebral dysfunction. There will not be any aphasia, apraxia, cortical sensory loss. So that is one point that differentiate, differentiates Lagna syndromes from the large vessel stroke or the butter, the tails we have mentioned like pax, pax and box. Etiology has mentioned, this is due to blockage of the small vessels. Thrombosis in C2 is the usual cause. And you can see that it's a very small area, it's a tiny area, that is why it is called a lacuna stroke. So, a lacuna stroke is a subcortical stroke. It is secondary to small vessel disease. There is no higher cerebral dysfunction. Aphasia, if present, is a point against lacuna stroke. That is one point that you should keep in mind. That is cortical dysfunction. Cortical features are absent in lacuna syndromes. So, as mentioned, the, this, these are the typical things that you may come across will be one is ataxic hemiparesis. That is, patient has got uh, upper motor neuron findings, cortical spinal findings, plus in coordination. That is called ataxic hemiparesis, sensory motor stroke, pure motor stroke, pure sensory stroke. And one point you should remember the typical word terminology is at dysarthria clumsy hand syndrome. That is, patient has got still this one. The pants are clumsy plus there is dysarthria. This is a characteristic Lagna syndrome. I will repeat once more dysarthria, clumsy hand syndrome. And ataxic hemiparesis, these are the two conditions that you may come across frequently, especially in the examinations. This is the summary of what we have already mentioned total anterior circulation. Partial anterior circulation, lacuna syndromes, and posterior circulation syndrome. The typical features we have already described. That is in the total anterior circulation, all the three criteria are present. That is weakness, permanent seminopia, plus higher order dysfunction, higher function, so that is abasia, price, etc., or cortical dysfunction. In the partial, two are there. That is Permanent seminopia, unilateral weakness plus minus sensory, or higher order dysfunction in the form of dysphasia. Lacuna, we have already described in detail. Posterior circulation stroke also, any one of the above, that which we have mentioned, that is cranial nerve dysfunction, bilateral motor sensory findings, cross ring hemiplegia, eye movement disorders, especially congenital gaze paresis. Cerebellar dysfunction, isolated homonymous hemianopia can occur in posterior circulation stroke also. So, homonymous hemianopia can occur not only in anterior circulation but also in posterior circulation stroke. So, in summary, we have described, we have defined what is stroke. We have mentioned a few words on dance ischemic attacks. We said the stroke can be due to arterial and venous infarct. We said about the percentage. Pathologically, we divided it into ischemic and hemorrhagic. Depending upon the vascular territory, we have divided it into anterior circulation, posterior circulation, and ischemic stroke clinically, we divided it into total anterior circulation, partial anterior circulation, lacuna syndromes, posterior circulation stroke. And the hemorrhagic stroke we divided it into intraparenchymal bleed and also subarachnoid bleed. So, in the following session, we will discuss what are the imaging features. So, you when the patient comes, you order blood sugar. If the sugar is normal, check the fast. You look at the ABC, SpO2, including SpO2, and once hypolysis image is excluded, send the patient for an MRI and CCT. In the next session, we will discuss about the imaging findings in stroke.
hope you enjoyed this session thank you